Well, today we're going to talk dogs and fencing. Let's just say animals and fencing because... You know, we've had the opportunity to fence everything in from wolves to tortoises to chihuahuas to fence snakes out, real quote unquote. I don't know if that's real possible. Um, and we, we, we've heard it all. We've heard it all. You know, there's fencing at the zoo. There's fencing in your backyard. There's fencing everywhere. So honestly, I think my favorite animal, though, that we've fenced in has been it's actually been two or three times now fencing in for very large tortoises. Mm -hmm. And the one that I think of is um, that one out there towards Maynardville. They had to lift name? it up to move well, it. Well, either way, it was an African, African spur tortoise. It was huge. It was huge. Yeah, we had, to, we had to get a couple beach blankets underneath it. And me and Logie Poo had to get that thing from the backyard to the front yard. I wish I was there because I would just pet it, pet it, pet it, pet it, pet it. There's not much to pet. It wasn't a cute turtle. Nope, and they'll get this you. It was a monster. And its best friend was a chicken. <laughs> the reptiles like that are my worst, worst fear. Because he was a tortoise. Yeah. Bro, he was looking at us like. Yeah, he wasn't gonna move <laughs> real quick though. <laughs> He wasn't gonna move real quick. <laughs> that that's one of the the things like that scares me about reptiles is, <laughs> is like I think sci-fi sci-fi movies have gotten to me because that's the ones that like they're walking like that and then it's like <laughs> like those lizards and stuff. Your Logan's are deathly afraid of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, those were my boys. But that was those that that those are very interesting. Very interesting. I wonder what Mike needed. Then why are you afraid of reptiles when you're not afraid of the mutant ninja turtles? That's a good point because I've never personally met the ninja turtles. But if I'd met them in person, I would probably be quite scared of them. It's kind of like you probably when you were little, did you ever watch Mickey yes. on the TV and then you went to Disney and maybe you're a little freaked out? It's kind of the same thing. We have reptiles in our backyard. Chickens. Those aren't reptiles. Uh -huh. The snakes that were in the coop, though, the other day were... <laughs> Can't let that one pass. Yeah. Reptiles. <laughs> Daddy, can I tell them the story? We can tell a quick version of it. How about that? So can I say really, really fast? Just tell them what happened. Well, we're, well we came home from out of town, right? And we yeah, had to, and then we had we're to... We're going to get the eggs. And then, and then Daddy was like... At the chicken coop, and then... I was like, holy moly, there's two giant rat snakes just coiled up, at, you know, in like our storage area feet. of the coop. One was six feet and one was four feet. The mm -hmm. six feet one was faster and the four feet one was slower. And they'd eaten, they'd, they'd swallowed a couple of our wooden eggs, the ones that you put out, so it encourages chickens to lay, so I don't think they were feeling too good. What'd you do with them? Kind of like Tarzan did, or kind of like George of the Jungle did. Did you watch that movie with uh, with yeah. Brendan Fraser? And you like swing them over your head and you send them on their way. Who did that? They did not do it. Couldn't you put like a ring camera in a chicken coop? Yeah, sure. I'm sure you could. Like just to see when snakes come in. Just honestly, cameras kind of freak me out. Like, what if you just see something on it that you're like, it was, it was not, I was not meant to see that. I mean that's part of it. Like it, like chupacabra up in there eating my chickens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's a chupacabra? It's a. It's a it's great a, question. It's like a Mexican goat man. Chupacabra. Nobody's found one. I don't think in real life yet. Maybe they have. Drop a comment if you found chupacabra. Um, and then we'll fence him. We have not, yeah, we'll <laughs> fence him in or out. We have not done a fence for any cryptozoological creatures like Sasquatch, the Loch Ness Monster, nothing like we that. We never fenced in, like, video animals. Right, like the Yeti. Never, ever. They're we fenced out bears. Real. Done some bear fencing, some yep. deer fencing. Horse. Horse. Cow. Cow. Cat. Cat. Wait, really? Tigers. Yeah. Oh. That's right. You never told me that. Yeah, we fenced them all. Justin Dunlap fenced out the Bengal cats. 
<laughs> he did. He did. There's nothing better than hearing a salesman close a job for a wild animal. <laughs> mm-hmm. Am I sure it'll hold, ma'am? I don't. I don't want to offend you, but we fenced out Bengal cats. Fenced in Bengal cats. It'll hold your alpacas in. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing I do think it's a common question, though, is, and I hate this too, but, you know, we'll do our standard four foot aluminum fencing and then we get a call like two weeks later and they're like, my dog's getting out because their little Yorkie can squeeze through the picket gap in there. And I was talking to Victor about this today because his brother in law wants us to do a fence for him and he wants five foot spear top double picket. And I'm like, buddy, that's an expensive fence panel. I'm like, bring this sample with you and just see if you can't fit Fido through the gap. If you don't fit through it, let's just put together some regular aluminum <laughs> fencing. There's, there's some wild animals out there, and some of them we fenced in Absolutely. and out. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. With a little bit of prison work. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Where'd we go this weekend? We saw some pretty big fencing this weekend. At Brushy Mountain. Brushy Mountain. It was tall. It was tall, and the creepiest part was probably in the movie. Yeah, the movie where they talk about all the inmates. Did you mm-hmm. do a full tour? Blood. You did it all. What did you think about the gym? Honestly, I wanted to play basketball in it. I'm like, this is a nice gym setup. Yeah, it was really cool. It's a real nice gym setup. Like these dudes had it nice. I know. <laughs> I mean... Relatively. <laughs> I don't know. High security prison. Maybe not. Maybe not. What's something else we get asked about dogs a lot? I think another thing that can be upsetting to a client is if you have a dog that's really prone to digging and you think putting in a new fence is going to 100% fix that. We've seen some tunnels burrowed by dogs. I mean, once a dog gets out of a fence the first time, they're always looking for the way out, you know, pushing on gates real hard, pushing on boards and pickets. And, you know, there's certain certain ways we can build the fence, like putting the boards on the inside that would, mm-hmm. you know, really secure the fence a little bit better. Because even more of the herding breeds, Border Collies, Aussies and all that have been known to scale the two by fours when we face the pickets out. Kind of a little bit of a ladder. We all have dogs. All three of us, and I don't know what to say next. Have our dogs gotten out of the fence before? Yes. Why was that? Even Jane has. Yeah. That's not <laughs> our dog. It's Milo's dog. Definitely that dog jumped the fence. <laughs> Just jumped to the fence, went over to Jeff's, and Vanessa was mad. She's like, get. 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 I think at first she thought it was a coyote. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Yeah, he absolutely <laughs> looked like a phone guy. Call to my left. <laughs> and she jumped in the pool. That's funny. Oh. Yeah. I think usually dogs get out of fences because people leave the gates open. Sometimes you think uh, will happen from time to time. <laughs> Honest mistake. There is nothing worse though than getting a call and they're like, "Your dogs are out," and you're like 20 minutes away, and you're like, "Well, I hope they don't get into the road." I mean, I'm beelining it, but <laughs> I'm just down here at the mall. <laughs> Got to drive home. Uh, he absolutely just ran through the mall to get our dogs. Do you know what's? Oh, and that was where it. It was Birdie. We Flynn was like. We were Whatever. leaving the beach the other day, and I opened the car door to like move some luggage around, and Birdie just jumps right out and is wandering. I'm like, get back here. And then they're I racing each you. other around the um, car. And Dad was like, Birdie, get in. Yep, probably used some choice words with her too, some encouraging language to get her back in the car. It's just it's funny um, keeping dogs in when first started i sold groundhog wire a couple times for like a dollar a foot (laughs) to where basically groundhog wire is where you would dig a foot down and then a foot out and then essentially dig a trench and make an l with wire 
that's something alone that would be like five grand every hundred feet <laughs> yeah. to, do it. <laughs> to do it. And I think we had Bill and some dudes out there with shovels. Oh, yeah, and we ended up bringing a machine out to just yeah. trench the hole. And then remember a couple years later, she's like, I think there's some gaps in it. And we had to go back out there and dig yeah. it again. Turn out they shortcutted it. Yeah. Well, there were some gaps. Uh, that, was, that fence was just a garden yeah. fence we needed to keep the groundhogs out yeah, and uh we don't offer groundhog wire no more why'd you take your headphones off they were hurting my ears oh yeah that'll happen Makes on these sense. bigger jobs i'm trying to think and of any I other fun animals yeah. we've we've take we've i always think like the skunk snake all that those conversations are real interesting because mm-hmm. you know you don't realize that some people's neighborhoods are just very prone for skunks or snakes or all that like we've never really had that problem anywhere we live and as confident as i want to say we can build a fence that'll keep a skunk and we'll that'll keep a snake out snakes can get through some some tight gaps mm-hmm. you know they can burrow find a hole to get under i think that's a, a very difficult conversation to have and say you know we can't guarantee can't we're not going to talk anything. about that conversation <laughs> And, you know, we just got to navigate through that. Because I think a lot of times, like, a pest control company or a wildlife, you know, management company can do a lot better to to ease the probability of something like that getting in your yard. You know, or a raccoon even. I mean, a raccoon's going to climb any fence you put up. Those guys are just yep. geniuses. They're very smart. Mm-hmm. And Maribel, I think this would be cool. Like, if you have just a, a solid, like, flat backyard, and, like, I think they had a pool, and it was, like, a cool backyard scenario, and they did horizontal shadow box, and they were fencing it. They were going to have, like, free-range rabbits. Wow. Just on the property? On the property. Which, well, all the hawks and coyotes, I mean, my good, somebody's going to be eating kinda good. it was kind of cool. They would just, they just chilling. Like, they are just running around. Could you handle them? Could you pick them up? Yeah, they were the kind. Of, they were the rabbits that you would keep in a thing, but they would take them outside and they would let them. They weren't like meat rabbits, or were they going to be meat rabbits? I don't think they were meat rabbits. Oh, okay, I mean, that's a thing. I don't know what a meat. Oh no! It's like you eat them? No, <laughs> no. It was like the big house rabbits, and then they would let them outside. And... <laughs> wow! I think Avery would love that. Who's? Get you some rabbits. Uh, get me a couple Get rabbits. You some rabbits. Teach you a thing or two about a thing or two. Yeah. Jack would probably... Next, <laughs> next thing you know, you have 30 rabbits. Yeah, Jack. Half, half <laughs> dachshund. Half, half, half dachshund, half rabbit. <laughs> 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 he would fit right in. That's just... Mm. Mm. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I'd love to sit here and say we can... I mean, we do a lot of agricultural fencing, too. Not to sell ourselves short. We, we're definitely good at... Horses and cattle and goats are a little bit easier to contain from time to time than just the intelligence of a dog and how motivated they can be to get outside of the fence. How about people? We've fenced a couple prisons. We have. Yeah, we've we've fenced some people in and out. People are like animals sometimes. <laughs> yeah, a little bit fencing for the transient population too. Not yeah. to make. Not to make their lives hard, but there's just certain areas that can be dangerous for those people in a transitional stage of life to be sleeping. You know, we've done a lot of work with the city of Knoxville. It's hard. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Prisons. We've quoted a lot more prisons than we've we've installed, but those are tough fences. Man, the specs. It's got to be all domestic. You know, there's... Installing 10, 12, 14, 16 foot chain link is all equipment, the razor wire. It's just an extremely hard installation to be able to do efficiently and effectively. And we do a lot of commercial and industrial, but when you get up to those heights and the specs and how heavy and thick the fabric is, that is a, that's a man's job right there. It's like specialty. Absolutely. Almost. That's probably a lot of companies that do that. That's generally all they do. Mm -hmm. Maybe travel and... I think that's where you see a lot of the unionized fencing labor, the steel mm-hmm. erectors, labor, you know, labor unions getting more and more involved in that because that truly is just 
different game. That is that is hard, hard work. Cause that's much different than even fencing for the airport or the federal government, just fencing property boundaries. It's just like we were driving up through West Virginia. We went on a little snowboarding trip. And do you remember that prison that was right off the side of the road? They had like three layers of mm. fence and razor wire bundles between them and because people are escaping people yeah and like we talked about like if a prison or jail is located close to any sort of transit or highway you usually see much more extensive fencing around that that was abington Mm -hmm. virginia that we were driving by and um gosh i just i'm also like if somebody escapes and gets through the fence is their liability to the fencing contractor I mean, surely not, but you'd feel horrible. Like, oh, yeah, they just mm-hmm. cut right through it. They just walked right out. Yeah. I'm like, oh, darn it, we put that latch on backwards again. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's, that's on me. Let me get a team out there. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll mobilize out there today. Sorry. I'm sorry that guy with a 30 count <laughs> Yeah, just got under. Just 30 got life up, sentences but, just walked right out. But we'll figure that out on yeah, the back we'll, end. Uh, Let me get a crew out there. We could there. probably do a small discount. <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh, those daddy yeah can i tell them about tommy no no we're not gonna talk about that <laughs> i'm sorry uh but, yeah yeah those are the things that's what we're fencing in that's what we're fencing out it's just exhilarating you know like we've got to work with horse haven of tennessee and you know we do very gentle horse fencing when we work for them that doesn't have any barbed wire it doesn't have any electric fence you know a lot of times when these animals are more aged you don't need the barbed wire you don't need the hot wire you just really need that two by four woven wire so they can brush up against it without getting cuts cattle are pretty easy i love doing cattle fencing i feel like Mm -hmm. that's the lowest liability you know you can really find a cost effective method to keep you know a herd of cattle contained even though they're big animals they're not typically real motivated to get out which is good what kind of dogs do you have b a lab and a mini aussie the mini aussie is not a mini aussie it's a huge aussie which one's your favorite um, if you had to choose, I like both of them, but Fair. Birdie. Yeah, I like our, she, our labs. All dog. Our mini Aussies, kind of a cat dog. Because, like, mm-hmm. she walked around with me everywhere. Mm hmm. We're like probably tries... going to get another lab. We'll probably get another lab someday, yeah. A girl lab. Probably a boy. Go uh, three dogs? No, it'd be after, oh, okay. you know. So, so that's that a next, different world. That next, uh, when the next availability is there. Yeah. I don't think we're three dog people. You can go to somebody's house that has two dogs yeah. and life is normal. Once you cross into that three dog territory, yeah. like, yep. that's different. What yep. about one dog? One dog's easy too. I think two's the easiest though because... They kind of keep themselves busy. Once you go to three, they're a pack, too. So they, they've really got to be <laughs> one dominant one, you know. Yeah. The mischief and just so goes. We- Sarah's tried to get us to three dogs for years. I cannot tell you how many times she's like, look at this dog. That's a for adoption. Look at that dog. That's great. One time we almost adopted a blind half Dalmatian. It was blind and deaf. Half Dalmatian, oh, half Lord. Great Dane was not the dog for us i'll tell you what like i'm we're good with dogs not great like that's how do you train a dog like that you, how would, how would you it can't know see alive? that's it just stood there i think it could hear i think it was very stubborn the rescue is convinced and they're professionals i shouldn't doubt them but i was like i don't know i think this dog's just thick scold Roscoe's on the back 40 yeah, again. Don't know how to get back in the house. And then another dog. We almost adopted this pit bull that was named Baja, and it could skateboard. That would be cool. Okay. It was very mouthy, though. It was a very mouthy dog where Brantley was very young. And, but I was like, but it can skateboard. <laughs> it could skateboard. I mean, Birdie when you run the numbers. So just when you look. At, <laughs> but really, it was just. That dog had never been in a home with other dogs or ch- like it was just going to be one of those things where we're not, you know, 
fostering a dog would be hard where you just have for a little bit and you're like, I don't know if this is going to work. Like I'm either all in or we're not, we're not getting the animal. Let's think of other, what else has mommy tried to bring home? Goats. I tried to bring home goats. Tried to bring home a mini cow, mini donkey. Mini cow. What's a mini cow anyways? Just a small version. We brought home a bunch of chickens. Mm. We're like the chicken rehabilitation home, really. We take a non-laying hen. We get it laying. We do. <laughs> that sucker's just laying eggs all the time. The only one that isn't laying is probably Gimpy. Yeah, I don't think Gimpy lays eggs. Poor Gimpy. Can't get Gimpy her feet under her. Gimpy just walks like her feet are broken. Yeah, they're all jacked. They're all jacked up. It was one of Tommy's chickens. Mm. And Cousin her feet Tommy. are just facing each other. And yeah. then she just tries to run, but she can't. She does a little flying. She does a little bit of flying. She's real she territorial. Jumps. She'll attack the dogs a little bit. Like if they're all out, okay, she'll go after the dogs. So that's exciting to watch. Oh, yeah. Gimpy was like this. Mm-hmm. And then the bird, and then Birdie and Flynn just were like, ow, ow. Oh, yeah, the dogs do not like it when the chickens run at them. Didn't they, y'all talk about a The first time we let the cow? dogs out. A um, red cow? What's Some a red cow? cow? A Himalayan. Himalayan cow. Sarah would love a Himalayan cow, although uh, mini uh, cows, but... Uh, the dog? Yeah. The <laughs> it's dogs. just... It's a what? A wet Is that what those are called? What's a wet tussie? Like it has like... Yeah, and they have like really long <laughs> hair. What did you say? A wet uh, <laughs> Is that uh, what it is? Uh, <laughs> um, our dog just ran away, way far away from the chickens. And they're just like. Hey, somebody's Nick was talking to me about fencing in a coyote preserve. One of his clients. Good luck. It's like a hunting preserve, and I was like, "Yeah, that's what I was like." I'm like, "This is gonna have to be a big fence because they also dig." Mm-hmm. I think it was only, he only wanted five foot two by four woven. Of course, my least favorite fence to order, but I was like, "I don't know." No, but well, they're getting out of that. No, for sure. They can flat foot eight feet. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing quite like it. Okay? No, not that big. My gosh. Sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> Put those horns on my Cadillac. <laughs> a cat with horns? A Cadillac. It's a car. You put horns on the front of them no, like you're from Texas. A cat. Put a Plate on the front. Big Daddy. <laughs> Big Daddy. <laughs> Big Pappy. Big Papa. That's right. That, I think that Sprinter's still available if we want to make a move on it. Yes! That'd be there pretty cool. Go. I think I don't think Mama's real keen on that one, though. Not real keen. That was cool, though. I was sporting that seven-hour trip, and I was regretting, regretting you... Uh, I said, I talked so much junk about him in that plane. <laughs> and I was like, hour four, and I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> flying to the beach. <laughs> it's like, bro, by the time you do this, you do this. it's like, Ian, what are you doing? Yep. Like, why do you have... Yep. How, what did you guys drive down there? The Forerunner. Oh, yeah. Which drive, it did, really did mm-hmm. great. I came to love it a little bit more driving. I don't drive it often, but... Lexi normally does, and I was whipping it and enjoyed it, but sheesh. Where? We rocked the Tahoe down to the beach, and that was that was the first. I, I liked the drive, honestly, yeah. but we did it at night, too. I didn't do it during the day, so maybe yeah, that so made a gotta difference. Do it. You got to do it at night. We rolled up about 2.30 in the morning to the house last time we went down. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. <laughs> it is. It is. Wake up the next morning. We were in the pool by 7 a.m. still. Yeah. A few hours of sleep and just kick it in the <laughs> water. Daddy. Kick it right back out. Yeah. I'm gone. All right, you can go. You're good. Wait, how much people are out there? There's Mike and everybody's out there. Mike. Tons of people. Yeah, go see what they're doing. Can I go to the vegetable with Mike? Yeah, go ask him what time he wants to go. That's a good ask. That's a good ask. But it, but if he it, if he wants to go in a little while, can I come back? Yep. Bye, everybody. Bye. But as far as, you know, we get this question a lot, too, is economical fencing for dogs. You know, a lot of our business is obviously keeping the dogs 
you know, contained and safe and all that. And, you know, of course, we don't just like chain free. We don't like to see them on a chain. Let's get you a fence. And the four foot galvanized chain link, like that's really where that starts. Or I'd say two board with wire is pretty close in price if you mm -hmm. don't like the look of chain link. You know, and just the important part of installing the chain link, and we've seen this, you know, where other companies aren't putting tension wire on the bottom. And, you know, you'll get a lot of dogs that'll just nose underneath the fabric and they get out day one and you get a frustrated, frustrated person calling us to put tension wire on their fence because it was left off. Mm -hmm. I really think the board fence is a little more secure, though. Just the way it's built with the wire between the posts and the boards. What are your thoughts? Well, because the chain link on the bottom has the tension wire, but essentially a board is much better than a t tension wire to begin with. I agree. So it's not, unless you have a dog that's just going to blaze through some 2 by 4 welded wire, I think you're in good Which shape. I don't think we've ever really had that, of just a mm -hmm. dog completely mm -hmm. blowing it, it out. You'd have to give it some, some umph. And so that, I mean, really a two board, like if we're ever doing four foot chain link, mm -hmm. I think we probably should be like, have you thought about two board? Yeah. Because it's Cause a lot of people a prefer the look too. And on the gates, we can X them. So it looks like cross butt mm -hmm. gates and that looks real good. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I'm just, you and I have always been big fans of board fencing though, from an installation standpoint and just servicing the job later. You know, of course you're going to get the wood aging, but in reality, like, most people aren't staying in their house for the 30 or 35 years that a galvanized chain link job is going to last or even longer. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's one of those things you get 20 years out of a wood fence with wire all day, 20, 25, and you You'll know, take it. you can stain it. You can do whatever you want. It's just a good look. I mean, maybe I'm, I also have board fence at my house and it's painted black and it looks great. It's mm -hmm. just a, it's a very classic, classic look. Yeah. Even in neighborhoods, I've been surprised on how many times, you know, of course, the looser HOA neighborhoods or non-HOA neighborhoods, like it looks good. You go through a 70s neighborhood and there's a bunch of nice ones in Knoxville and it's just, you see crossbuck, you see four board, you see two board, you know, they're well-maintained jobs, the mm -hmm. agricultural jobs, it's kind of that gap in between. It's a good way to step up from chain. I think when you say chain link, there's people that just get a bad gets a bad rap mm -hmm. a little bit but absolutely people call it prison fencing <laughs> yeah <laughs> want my yard to look like a prison <laughs> which i don't agree like if i'm gonna go install fence i'm pulling a chain link job every time mm -hmm. every time if i'm gonna go build one myself let me do four foot black chain link mm -hmm. not even aluminum i'd prefer chain link it's just yeah. i don't know why just i love the process of it could you shut that door on let's be coming back you might be um, and I'd really say next up behind the chain link and all that, like my next recommendation for somebody would probably be vinyl fencing the PVC for the, for a dog. Just, I really like that solid bottom rail It has the steel insert in the bottom. You really don't get a whole, yeah. Are we, are you going to come to the fish store with us? Or when are you going? Um, me and Mike are going to meet there and yeah. I need somebody to drive me. <laughs> Where's Mike at? <laughs> gonna go to somewhere i forgot where it is okay we might do lunch and then maybe we can meet him or maybe you all could go after lunch when he gets back here ask mike if he wants to go to lunch first what? ask, ask mike, mike if he wants to go to lunch first and then you could always run an errand with him if you need to i just want to run with him all right go talk fair but that the pvc bottom rail I think that is bulletproof as long as you don't have major grade changes in your yard to just keep a dog in. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it's thick, it's extruded, it's manufactured very responsibly as far as to not be brittle. Like that, that's, that's got a lot of appeal if, my, if I know my dog is pushing on, pushing on a fence all the time. Yeah, I mean, because you can't see through it as well because of tongue groove pickets. Yeah, complete privacy. And so that, that helps with um, a good example was the beach house when we were there. <clears throat> that The neighbor had like a Rottweiler. Two of them. Oh, they're there all the time? Mm-hmm. Had, had a Rottweiler. That would be minorly an issue. 
when we're in the pool if he could see us Mm -hmm. you know but he can't and so that's a big like if that was just aluminum or even an older privacy fence or something like that like it's just natural for a dog to just be like what's up over there Mm -hmm. and so that really does go a long way and yeah, it helps with kids and helps with whatever. Well, because I, I do feel like a lot of people in their head are like, I'm going to get a privacy fence, a standard, like what's here on these walls. I'm going to get a dog ear privacy fence. But in the reality is, even if there's an eighth inch gap, when you drive by in a car and you, you can see through a privacy fence, those small little air gaps, a dog can see through them all day. You still get a lot of fence aggression out of a dog. And that's where that full privacy, which you either have to do a board on board, a shadow box or a PVC fence to get that and i think that just it removes an element of curiosity in dogs to where they're like you know if they're staring through that crack they're like i can kind of see something let me pot this fence real hard it's just it's the first domino to fall Mm -hmm. especially if you've had a dog that's gotten out of a fence even if your dog's jumped the fence dug under whatever if a dog is just very curious and they get out of a fence once they'll spend all day running the fence line running the Mm -hmm. fence line running the fence line and i feel like everybody's first instinct is my dog's doing that because it's protective of my property which i think a lot of times is the case on patrol but a lot of dogs actually do that because they're looking at the for the weakest point in the fence where they can push a little bit further the dirt's a little easier to dig whatever that might be you know which really leads me to my next point on all that too is You know, the relative grade of the yard, how much it goes up and down is going to dramatically either increase or decrease the safety of the fence for the animal. Because, you know, we talk about the top of the fence. We want that top of the fence line to be very flat, grade grade changes to be gradual. But what you get with that is sometimes a varying gap on the bottom, you know, and that's where a horizontal privacy fence really comes into play. We can cheat a whole bunch of grades, still keep pickets really close to the ground. Whereas a case where, you know, grade might not have been real set by, real well set by the builder and you're doing a PVC privacy fence. Well, I mean, I looked at one this week. The fence looks amazing, but underneath you have a varying gap from one inch to nine inches in one section because they never set final grade before they put sod down. And that's just something that, you know, when you're shopping for a fence, it really needs to be addressed on the front side. You know, the client needs to be looking at their yard and saying, hey, this isn't real flat, and then we can recommend a good reference for a little bit of grade work, then let's bring the fence in. Mm-hmm. So, gosh. I'm just thinking about the beach, the beach house there at that fence. And, you know, in the case where you're sharing a fence line with your neighbors, that's a time to really... Aluminum doesn't always do it. Like dogs get injured every day fighting between fences, and mm-hmm. especially when you have a larger, more aggressive dog and a curious one on the other side, a dog can get tore up. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, yeah, that's a great way to do it. I think that's even a good, a good sell for vinyl is like people pay extra for board on board, and then you're just even closer to vinyl. Mm-hmm. It's like you would literally get that with, with vinyl. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a good thought. To Mark Ratton. Okay. So he's asking if he could ride. Yeah. Definitely gonna miss lunch. Okay. But I was either that or I could that meet you guys. That means I can go to Hobbs later. Oh yeah. Did you call Mama? She's in here. I know. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> you want me to call her? Okay. Either way. How far? Where's is Ratton hour? Westland. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you want to roll with him down there, buddy? Probably about an hour Yep. It's up to you. I think you probably want to stay here and eat, right? Okay. Yeah, we'll just all meet up in a little bit. No big deal. Thank you. <laughs> but I agree with you. By the time you do board on board or shadow box, you know, it's like at what point are you getting a better product with a better warranty? You know, and that's our job to really be, you know, the, you know, there's, we have some responsibility over ensuring that our client's investment is put in the proper direction. And I agree with like when it comes down to $2 a foot and we can honestly say like, this is the better option. Let's look at what fences your neighbors have. Like 
let's just make sure containment's key if you got a dog and then what's the best look what's the best price what's going to last the longest because even in the case of you know a lot of these newer neighborhoods the houses aren't real far off each other there's a lot of pvc and vinyl components on the outside of these houses i think in that case where it's a low maintenance house that was built let's put a low maintenance fence in the yard mm -hmm. all day let's keep that tortoise in keep that tortoise i think it'd bust out of a vinyl it thing. might bust well, it'd take a, it'd take a lot of, it'd take some inertia i don't know if i've seen a, a tortoise run Just that fast rubbing up on it yeah we should look into a tortoise a shop tortoise shop tortoise it's a yard tortoise up there yep Hanging out. He's guarding all the fence supplies. Yeah, it's just a big old Galapagos tortoise. That'd be tight. <laughs> well, our client, when they got theirs, she got it like, what, 25, 26, 27 years ago for her kids for Christmas, and she said it was the size of a 50-cent piece, and this thing weighs like 175 mm -hmm. pounds. It's huge. Every bit of it. it is, I mean, it's as big as the big around. It's bigger around than this barbecue. I mean, it was, it was wild. It's just, it's cool. We did another one years back where we made removable panels up in Powell's for a UT professor of something. I think they worked in the veterinary science program and his wife were both professors. And we just made these metal detachable panels and all that because they liked to almost like chicken tractor pasture move their tortoise depending on the time of the year and where the sun was because their property had a lot of trees on it and he had like these little playhouses built throughout the property <laughs> and that's where they'd move the panels to i think he had four or five of these like what like craftsman style hand-built playhouses and it was cool i mean y'all are into it but they needed the panels because their tortoise would get out and be approaching like Clinton Highway, Emory Road, all that. So it's just that'd be a tough day. Just well, yeah. I mean, livestock gets hit every day, though. You just roll over a tortoise. That would be horrible. I feel like you'd get a lot of car damage. Yeah, a lot of car damage. <laughs> Hope the car's okay. <laughs> Hope the car's okay. Hey, we fenced in tourists. Lots of tourists up at Anakista. We've done a yeah. lot of fence. And you know, up out, towards there, fencing out the bears, fencing out the bears. <laughs> Those are some, foot chain we have some great videos from our crews just yeah. running because there's bear like Fernando, wasn't it? Fernando, yeah. Rafa, tons. I need to send some over to you, Miley. You'd, you'd get a kick out of them, but <laughs> just one of the they'd seen bears all week, and one of the crew members took off their shirt and like put body paint on and made a fake spear. Yeah. And they made, like it's all in Spanish, but they made a little video like we're gonna chase these bears. Yeah, <laughs> that's literally one of the spots up there when we're doing fencing. You can turn around and you'll probably have a black bear just, just right there, just too. right there chilling. I went and set posts with Victor on one of those jobs, and it was like that. Like, oh, you'd just yeah, see yeah. Bear, like, 100 feet away, just mm -hmm. doing their thing with their cub. And, you know, black bear are relatively not a threat to human like brown bears are. But it was still, it's it's wild to see them. Mm -hmm. Like, in a setting where you're close, they could walk up to you. It's just, you got to be careful with your food, all that. You can't just be leaving... Leaving the Waggles bag on the truck seat. Yeah, they don't play. They don't. They don't. Right, Gray Smoky Mountains. Right there. I'm trying to think of anything else fun that we've done like that. I mean, a lot up there, the wolf rescue, but they're not much more than a dog to keep in. They'll dig pretty crazy. That's another one we have to do. Dig these trenches and lay fabric like a foot under the dirt and bury it back mm -hmm. over. And I'll tell you what. Those, though, that wolf instinct, that's a cold-blooded killer right there. They're mm -hmm. just staring at you. Just a yeah. stare off. You roll in the fence. Like, ah. oh, okay. She's like, just don't make eye contact with that one. I'm like, oh, easier said than done. Yeah. I don't, really know, don't really know what to do. Can I, I'll stare at it. Okay, I'll stare at it. I'm a man. One got out up there before, I thought, right? Mm-hmm. I was in there with the director of it all, Measuring Fence. And she's like, freeze. Tim, freeze. I'm like, I want to freeze. <laughs> Don't, it's not what I want to do. I want to run. I want really? to climb this fence. <laughs> she's like, you want to outrun him? I'm like, 
I'd put money on me right now. <laughs> you, you can't feel my heart rate right now. 50 bucks? <laughs> 50 bucks, yeah. 50 bucks and six weeks held up in the hospital getting stitched back together, missing a butt cheek. <laughs> it's just... She's like, it's 50-50. This one could attack you or it could not. I'm like, oh, well, I like those odds. Just need to outrun you. If the lottery was that good, I'd be buying lottery tickets. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Sorry, Jennifer, I'm pushing you down. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's all, it's all part of the game. Fun in the fence, biz. Fun and fence. That's what we should name this. Fun and fence. Milo, change the sign, buddy. (laughs) Well, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Adios.